Welcome to freephotoshop.com and this week's video tutorial in which we're going to focus on masking. Now as you'll find out, masking is a big subject, so I've split it into three parts. In this video, we'll answer the question, what is a mask? Then in the next video, we'll look at why we need masking when there are other easier to understand tools that can get the job done. Then in the third video, we'll actually go ahead and make a mask and put it into play. So for now, let me answer the question as to what a mask actually is. I've already got this image called What is a Mask open on screen. I've provided all of these images in the basic masks exercise files that can be downloaded by registered users at freephotoshop.com and consists of three images I took myself in New York City down on Fifth Avenue and one image that I've downloaded from the free stock image site called Stock Exchange and comes to us from a user on that site called Broken Arts and you can find out more information on their website about their image and their other projects um, at their website as I say www.broken-arts.com Alright, so what actually is a mask? Well, if we look over to the layers panel, we'll see four layers. So the photo strip and the three images taken in New York City. And those three images taken in New York City all have layer masks attached to them, represented by these black and white thumbnails on the right-hand side of the layer thumbnails. I'm going to switch off the top two layers by clicking the eyeballs so we can focus in on this middle layer, as it's called. Now, what the layer mask is actually doing is controlling what part of the layer we can see and what part we can't. So where the mask is white, it's allowing the layer to shine through to the composition. Where it's black, it's hiding that part of the layer from view. If I turn the mask off by shift-clicking it, we can see the whole image. If I shift click again to turn it back on, the mask that is, the area represented by black is being hidden or masked away. So the mask is allowing us to hide parts of the layer from view. And the really cool thing is that it's working without actually needing to delete any part of the composition. So if we want to bring it back later, we have 100% control to do it. If I go ahead and alt click here on the PC or option click on the Mac, on the mask we get to see how it looks in the main image window. Once again we can see that the area that's white is visible in the composition and the area that's black is being hidden from view. Alright, I'm going to switch out to another example. By the way, this example and the next one aren't going to be available in the downloads folder because I'm only going to be showing you how the masks in each of these images makes the editing process more complete. With that said, this is an image I used in my five hour huge massive level series. The original untouched image is on screen before you as I speak but I wanted to add a more dramatic sky so what I did is I created an alternative sky inside of Photoshop and then masked the original blown out sky away. So here's a little insight into how I achieved it. Another great use for a mask. First of all I'm going to turn off this layer so we can see the transparent background and then come down to the bottom and turn the visibility of the blue sky layer on. Then I added a gradient to make the sky look more realistic. The next thing I did was to create some clouds using the clouds filter in Photoshop and I've got a tutorial all about that on my website to go um, into detail as to how to create clouds using the filters. I then lightened it up to blend it in better with my image using a levels adjustment layer. Then of course I have my main image so I'll turn that on but it overlays the new and improved sky so I need to mask away the old sky to allow the new sky to shine through. I did that of course with a mask so I'll turn that on and now the sky underneath is shining through into the image. I'm going to alt or option click the mask so we can see it larger in the image window itself and this time the mask takes a more unique shape to accommodate the fine details in the trees so the new sky looks credible. A little more challenging to pull off but completely possible and the best way to work. 
Finally, I'm going to switch over to the third image and, of course, the third mask. It's an image called New York Night and Day because it's comprised of two photographs taken of Lower Manhattan from the Empire State Building, one just before it started to get dark and the other heading into early evening. And I've used a mask to mix the images up so we get a lighter New York here in the foreground and then a nighttime New York as the distance in the image starts to increase. I'll go ahead and turn the levels adjustment layer off and then the mask and then the layer itself to see the original daytime shot of Lower Manhattan. Then I'll turn the nighttime shot back on and at this point we can only see the nighttime image because the layer is above the daytime one. Now check out the mask. Instead of what we saw last time where we had a solid black and white one, this time we have a gradient running from the top which is white to the bottom that's black. So in this instance the white area at the top will allow this layer to shine through making the buildings way down in the background dark then as the white gets darker and runs right through the spectrum of greys we start seeing the layer until finally it turns black hiding everything underneath it so the luminance information in this mask represents the visibility of the layer so if I alt or option click the mask to turn it back on we see this particular layer at the top then slowly until we get to about here that's those greys coming into effect um, which is where the mask turns completely black just about here and from then on in we see nothing of the layer to the point where the layer beneath is shining through completely I'll turn that adjustment layer back on and there we have it hopefully that's answered the question what is a mask in the next video here at freephotoshop.com I'll show you why masks are so important to building up compositions and where the pitfalls are in using other, sometimes simpler, techniques. Thanks for joining me here at freephotoshop.com and I'll see you there in the next video.